Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. Today we're going to paint some moonlit winter scenes. Yay! <laughs> uh, simple blues, wet on wet, wet on dry, dry brush, all that fun stuff, techniques here. It's really not that difficult. You just take your time and you can create this. You don't need a traceable or anything, just simple drawing, you know, a slope here, a slope there, and then just painting, washing it in. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. It's really important to play with wet on wet and wet on dry and all those techniques and dry brush when you're doing watercolor. Those are the basics of actually using watercolor. And for this particular tutorial, a lot of serious shadow, you know, shadow is great. Light and shadow really helps you, you know, enhance that kind of picture. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get started. So these are two examples that I play around with um, the other day to paint. Uh, so I can show you how to do this like a night sky, you know, and you're basically just drawing kind of like a slope here or like a small little mountain here. You can do a couple mountains if you want to do that. And then we're going to do bleeding in, you know, wet on wet in here and then wet on dry and dry brushing here, wet on wet again in here. And then just painting some more, you know, wet on dry here with the strokes for the shadow for the, the full moon because we had a full moon in the other day. <laughs> And we're just using a few colors and a few brushes, right? So I'll put this aside here. Um, we're going to be using ultramarine blue, paints gray, and I have indigo over here in the corner. Uh, I'll be using my 12 round Princeton Aqua Elite and number six Velvet Touch series long round for the really de delicate um, tree branches. So like I said, you're basically drawing a slope and I'm going to create Something similar, and it won't be exactly the same as the first one, but the, you know. So I'll just take my pencil here, and I'm going to start kind of going up here, midway. Just make a little bump, and then kind of curve down here a little bit. Now maybe on this one, I might have some more of these trees. Yeah, it's kind of like a birch tree. And you want to paint around that because you're going to see the white. So I'm going to put my tree coming here, maybe like another one leaning. And I have that main tree, right? The bigger, wider tree. So I'm going to draw that up here. And then we don't have to worry about the branch so much. And then of course the moon. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see. I'm just using a 2H pencil. So there's the moon. I'm going to paint around that. You could use masking fluid. I'm not doing that here. I'm just going to paint around it. And there's the trees. And maybe I'll have another small tree. I'm going to make it a little different than the first one I did. So a couple little birch trees. And then the moon. I used to do a slope here. All right? So I'm going to take my number 12. Come back out. Then I'll loosen up my paint. So I used um, Ultramarine Blue Deep. And I mix it with some indigo and a little paint gray here and there. So you're just going to keep mixing and see how you like the colors. I kind of wanted a bright blue, so I got that ultramarine in there. So we're going to start with this section in here. Let's see how this looks. I want a little more ultramarine blue. So it's pretty wet. I'm holding the paper down my hand here. And we're going to be bleeding in. I'm going to go around that circle. Going down here. So you're just going to go in here. Put that pretty ultramarine blue. Maybe mix with some indigo. But it's really kind of wet. Gotta have to kind of work a little fast. That's why I have the big brush because the belly holds a lot of paint. See, I'm just going to outline it with the tip because it's got a nice tip. And you just will fill it in with that belly. Like that. Oh, by the way, the paper, I'm so sorry. It's like a four by six paper. You can make whatever size. I don't think the paper matters. You want to make it bigger, smaller. And will you get creative here? I'm just showing technique about how to make it look like a dark sky. 
add more trees, add more white trees, less white trees, more dark trees, um, things like that. Okay. So here I'm adding this nice ultramarine blue color. It's a nice vibrant blue. And I'm going to bleed it. Oop, that got a little mushed up, the tree. So it's all damp in here. I'm going to be adding paints gray, just tapping it in for the dark area. So going after my brush a little bit, getting the paints gray kind of wet. It's a little thick. Let's see how this is going to work. You want it to be consistency of like a round cream. And we're going to bleed in color here, just tapping in like trees. See, I'm bleeding kind of up. Get some more and bleed it down here. Now, this color up in here, I want a little bit darker too. Just tapping in. See, I'm just tippy tap with my brush. Get those black areas in there. You see how it looks like the background? I am going to add some indigo, darker color up in here. I want it dark too. Still want to keep it kind of bright, but I'm adding a little indigo. Whoop. I kind of messed my tree up. But that's all right. It looks a little more natural when it's not so perfect. You know, you can keep it as bright as you want. I'm adding a little darker color in here. Like I said, some indigo. And now it's nice and dark. So at this point, you're going to have to wait for it to dry, right? You bleed up that black and that paints gray in the background there. If you want to actually make it go up a little higher, I'm going to bleed it a little more up in here. You could have them looking like um, forest trees, but I'm just going to do like little taps. We're going to have to let that one dry. So while that's drying, we're going to go and do our mountain. So now from the mountain, we're going to figure out from here going up. So the middle again, kind of going down and kind of lifting up to the mountain and down. I don't even really have to draw it. See? Zoop, zoop. And then the bottom, if you want to, if you want to draw it, you can kind of figure it's going to go here. I kind of just painted it. I didn't even draw it. All right. Again, with the colors, we're not going to, you know, we're going to do a little different bleeding colors here. So I have the ultramarine blue. I'm going to need some more color here. We're not going to use a moon in this one, but you could put a moon here. So please feel free. And if you do, put it on this side. Put it on the left side because it's like you see all the brightness coming from here, like there was a full moon. So I'm just going to do like this, a little mountain here. Getting my, all this mushy color here. <laughs> I love it. You got the ultramarine blue kind of mushed up in here. A lot of the color. I like that ultramarine blue. There we go. Nice bright blue. I'm just kind of putting wet on dry paper here. And by the way, I'm, did I not mention that it's Arsh 100% cotton cold press? I'm sorry if I didn't. But my description box tells all of my supplies. So I have that kind of like a flat wash of color. Now I'm going to take some indigo. Could even take some Payne's Gray with indigo. I'm going to go across like this. Getting more color up in here. Even down here, more indigo this way on the dark side. Just like that. I get a little bit darker up top. Up in here and here. Just playing around with that. So now we're going to play around with bleeding in here. This can be a little tricky. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue. 
I'm going to lift up some of this blue color here, get rid of it. I do want to add more paints gray. So I'm going to lift, lift up some of this color. It's all bleeding everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to loosen up some paints gray and blue. I want a light color here, a little light wash to start. So we have that line that I drew here. I'm just going to put this line, a little light color. I'm going to grab some more gray. Okay, just so I can indicate where it's going to go. Now I'm going to grab a little water on my brush. Actually, a little more water. Clean up that blue. I want it lighter. Even lighter. I'm going in here and just filling in. Oh, excuse me. Cleaning off some more. Getting the water. See how I can just soften that edge there? So now we're going to bleed some trees in there. Add a little more color here first, though. Okay. I'm just going to soften up in here. So at this point, you can still use this brush. The tip is nice. Or um, the number six. I'm going to do the wiggle trees that kind of get fuzzy, right? You want it wet, damp, but not super wet. We're going to test it and see how it looks. And we're going to use the paint consistency of like the indigo and the ultramarine blue, more indigo with a little paints gray mixed together. You can see here on the tip of my brush, more on the cream. So I'm going to just put a line down and kind of wiggle. Wiggle the paint. Now I'm grabbing some thicker paint so it won't bleed as much. See the fuzzy trees? Kind of want to make some taller and then some smaller. Just like that. Now I see that there's a line happening here, back here. I'm just going to take the paint and loosen this up a little bit and go out this way. So it doesn't look kind of goofy. There. And then go back pretty quickly and grab those colors and make those fuzzy trees. Oops, that one's a little too black. <laughs> fuzzy, fuzzy. Fuzzy. If you want to just kind of tap it with the, see I'm just making a line and kind of wiggling this, wiggling on the paint on the sides. Leaving a space in the middle the tiny trees where the road would be. So I'm here again, just putting the line down and wiggling the paint. I think I have on the other greeting cards that you saw before with the kind of gray wet on wet and wet on dry, the gray tones with the mountains. This is a little bit different with the blue with the night sky. So you can, that's why I like this brush. You can, it's got a nice huge belly. And you see I'm wiggling, going back and adding just thicker paint. Now I've grabbed the paint, it's a little bit thicker. And you kind of just tap too. You can just tap and kind of go make those little lines going up. And this tree, I'm going to make even taller over here. Kind of wiggle. I want a fairly tall one on the side. A little darker. See that? I'm grabbing thicker paint on my brush. Hardly any water. Doing that line down again. It's still kind of bleeding. But even thicker paint. Back and forth, wiggle. Like I said, you need a bigger, tall tree back here. Just, it just matters that you leave that little space in between here. See, so then when you put, zoom back out, there's your mountain trees. Now here it kind of blended in too much. There's that line. So that's okay. I'm going to just erase that. Maybe you didn't need to bleed those. You can just kind of paint those in. I'm just going to lift up the paint. See my brush? Take the paint. Go back on the paper towel. Lift it. 
remove it so it doesn't look strange. Kind of blend that paint up in here. And I can go back in and add the trees. So that's kind of like, let that dry. While that's drying, I didn't mention, I didn't mention that we are gonna use um, burnt umber also. So loosen up some burnt umber. I always forget until I remember as I do things. Mix it with some paints gray. I want it fairly kind of minimal water. So I'm gonna just, take, picture the road's gonna be here and just kind of take your brush tip. See, I'm just lightly kind of ch -ch. minimal water on the paintbrush. That's why you get that dry brush stroke. That'll be the road. And you can add some little paints gray to get a little darker. Tapping on my paper towel to get off all the excess water. There's the road. Grabbing some paints gray. Just kind of almost like black. Just making these little divot lines. And then I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and just get a little bit looser and push some paint over this way and this way. There, that's the road. And then I'm gonna take the same colors and kind of just, here we go, dry brush it on the side, go like this. Well, that's a little too bright. I want it more of a blackish brown. See that? This is where the dry brush comes in handy. A little bit over here and down here. Like there's some dirt road kind of happening over there. And we do the same thing with the blues and grays. So I've got the paints gray here, mixed with some ultramarine blue. If you tap it on your paper towel, it becomes like more of a dry brush kind of situation. It takes off all the excess water. And here I'm taking the, that grayish blue color and adding in some nice dry brush strokes. One can kind of be a little darker coming all the way across. I'm trying to make it a little bit different than my first one. And get some gray in here. Oh, it's a little too dark. That's okay. Like I said, I want it different. And then the left side, more just blues, pretty blues. So we've got the ultramarine blue, mix in some paints gray. Oh, again, a little dark. You want it lighter than that? Okay, it's not cooperating. Again, just going on the side, loose. Have some coming this way by the trees. Just a little bit lines like that. And by now this should be all dry up in here. I'm gonna put some other lines in here and a couple of blue lines kind of going into the road. Now we're gonna put some shadow on the mountain. So again, with the paints gray, loosen that up and some blue. We're gonna to start to go right here to the edge of the side here and up in here and then just kind of go like this on the side. You can see a little bit of white, not too much. That part's a little bit darker. Then you clean up your brush or water it down a little more. Tap on the paper towel and have a couple little lines up in here that are much lighter. See, these ones are really pale kind of up in here. Just a few. And then a few kind of crossing over here. Oops, that one's a little too dark. Just like this, crossing over. Right? I'm gonna make this just a tad bit darker. Again, might add some brown and paints gray just to change it up a little bit. Get a little bit dark over in here. On that right side. Then we're gonna go back to our trees. I'm gonna darken that up. Again, just a line down and a wiggle wiggle. Gonna get these a little bit darker. So now there's like a hard edge tree, which is fine. And I'm just using um, indigo. You can add a little paint gray to your indigo. I want these a little bit darker. It's really a simple, I know you're gonna say it's not, but 
when you get used to using this dry brush technique it becomes pretty simple and just the, the key is to edit don't put a lot of marks just a few I'm going back and adding this indigo with paints gray getting those nice dark dark trees especially in here because it should be much darker over in here almost blackish on this side because the shadow is kind of on this side and then we have a pretty mountain little trees you know it just takes time to do all these little wiggles but once you get it it's fine and there's our mountain with the trees I feel like it's a little too light in here so I'm gonna go and add another little wash of like color just to you know it's just mm, homogenous kind of meh adding a little couple of touches in here out here make these a little darker and I've been still over here that's a little too dark <laughs> there we go and then at the end, you take some white gouache. I have a little white gouache. This is number six, comes in handy. Take a little white gouache. Got some over here. And you can just do little dots for um, the stars. Do, do, do. Cluster a few here and there. I feel like my sky is a little lighter in this one than the other one. But still, it looks good. And maybe my mountain needs to be a little bit darker on the one side. But you just the things you can play with on your own. I'm going to go back and add some more dark color tones. Just on this side. There. Okay, let's go back to the trees. So. Now we're going to play around with paints gray. You could add a little burnt umber to it if you want to make it like a brownish gray. We're going to do the tr main tree. Just going to put that color in. Leave a little white up here on the edge of the tree. See how I'm not painting in the whole entire section? But definitely on the right. And then we come down here, kind of bring it down to like where you can see some roots. Adding a little brown, just fill it in. Getting a little darker still. I'm gonna add some more paints gray, thick, kind of on this right side. Putting it down, roots. Right? We're gonna bleed some of this. Meanwhile, let's go over on this side, paints gray. Kind of going down here on the side. You can add a little brown to it, like I said with those birch kind of trees we were putting on the side here. So you see how I'm just painting the left side and some too blue, I want more. I just painted that one side. And then you take the tip of your brush. We're gonna do these little lines kind of going like this, like a birch tree going across, hatching kind of thing. So it's kind of bold in our birch and you can add deeper like black tones bleeding on the left side but I want it kind of bold looking like that. so it's really enhanced by the the moon glow now you could you could soften it a little bit if you want to like see this one I'm trying to soften a little bit by adding a little water and then of course we still need those lines so taking the thick part of the Paints gray and going across, making some lines. Don't make a million of them here and there. See, I just tippy tapped just a few right there. It's a little too white up in here. I'm going to just blend it. Blend it here. You're just tapping and blending, all that fun stuff. So now on the bottom, the trees, 
remove some of this paint gray. I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue again with the paint gray. All right, so you mix those two, the blue and the gray, and we're going to do our shadow. See here, I'm going to kind of come out here and go with the tree like this. And we have a nice shadow. I'm going to loosen up some of the color here with more water. I just grab some more water on my brush, tap and paper towel, kind of blend it on this section here. And then I'm going to do some little lines. Right? And then here, same thing. We're going to have the lines coming here, going across out. So we're getting there. Now we're going to add more trees. So I'm going to take the pans gray, water it down. I think you want some trees over here. Coming up. This is the big trunk part of it. We'll have branches that are small with number six. I'll put them over here. I'm going to have a tree right here next to the big tree, and it's going to go into the full moon. See, like that. Oop. A little branch connecting that, and maybe another branch up into the full moon. You're just taking some tree branches and then go up in here. Skinny ones in the background, even smaller ones in the background, even one smaller back here. This is the thing where you're going to play with how many trees you want, all that nonsense. You want them coming back into the snow, less into the snow, a little bit bigger. These are things you're going to play with. Big ones, small ones. And all the trees that are in the snow, we have to have, and even some that are not in the snow, we need to have some shadows. So I'm putting just the major trunk part of it in, and then we can go back in with the number six and do all the little teeny branches. But right now I'm just putting the main trunk in. And some of these, I'll go back in and add little teeny branches. So now that I've got those main trees, I'll clean up my brush and I'll grab that blue on gray color that I just did with this one. Put it out like this. Put some skinny ones where you imagine the branches would be. See, you're just making it go left. And on this side, it's going to go right. Kind of like that. You see? And have a little color on the snow up in here where it meets the dark snow. I mean, the, excuse me, the dark sky. I'm just putting in a little bit of color here on the edge of the snow. I probably should have did that first, but that's okay. I'm going to go around my trees. It doesn't matter. You can make it a little more extended if you want. Just as long as you have some of that blue there. So the blue with the gray has a nice intensity. If you want to get a little bit darker, you want to throw in some grasses, you know, play around with that. The blue, and you get this one a little bit darker still. It's a pretty intense shadow. Same thing with this one. Just mixing the blue up again. Oh, that's a little too dark. So when there's, you know, it depends on how intense you want it. I'm going back and adding my ultramarine blue, watering it down. I'm going to add some of the little lines that would indicate tree branches. It just adds a little extra something when you get those little lines. coming out. Mm. All right, so I'm going to take my number six, wherever you went. <laughs> Always when I'm looking for something, you think it was in the... Oh, here it is. And I'll do my skinny little branches. 
and you can have fun just doing this all day long. You want to be able to move this paint so you can see. I'm trying to go fast, but you can get the idea. We've done branches here a thousand times. Just the little branches, kind of crisscrossing some areas, going out this way. So it's a moonlight, snowy scene. This tree needs to get a little bit darker. Gonna kind of loosen up this paint's gray, burnt umber. Get a little darker. Definitely on this side. Less on the other side. And I think I'm going to throw in a few grasses. It's up to you if you want to put grasses in or not. Remember that they have a shadow too. Don't leave them alone. <laughs> they need a shadow. And that's pretty much it for the both of these, you know, moonlit winter scenes. I'm getting a little bit darker again still on this birch tree. on that side. And then up here, got a little too late. There we go. And that's that. So now, we see our two paintings. Similar to the first ones that I did. You know, not perfect, but good enough. <laughs> So let me know if you had a good time doing this. I mean, it could be a little frustrating for some people. Take your time, you know, go back. I'm gonna go back in here with the blue and gray once this is dried and these shadows, just so they can see them kind of popping. And then it goes in here and you can have some kind of like where the snow wiggles, gets a little moundy and go across. Play with it, you know. But basically that's the gist of it. That's the gist of it for today. Winter moonlight. <laughs> so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. You know, you're just bleeding in the blue. You're just taking the dry brush, hold it on its side. Tap it on that paper towel to get all that excess water off. That's the key, so you get that dry brush effect. Right? You don't have to put a road in. You can just do it without a road. You can put some grasses here. You can put a tree, a big tree kind of coming up here. Kind of cool. Or you can put the moon here too. Same thing. And then here, you can have all birch trees. You don't even have to have this big tree. You know? It's up to you. You can have less trees. You can put like evergreen trees back here. You know? It all depends on how you want to do it. So there you go. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so. And thank you guys so much for stopping by. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.